Hello, welcome to the channel. Today we'll be talking about Just Cause, or the failed attempts at making Just Cause movie, and the announcement of the newest attempt. Animated. So to cover the most recent announcement of the Just Cause movie before we elaborate and talk about the messy history of this project, Universal, through The Hollywood Reporter, announced that they had found a producer, directors, and a production companies, but they didn't announce a writer. The names attached to Universal's projects are Angel Manuel Soto. For director, he has worked on numerous Spanish-speaking TV shows that I have never heard of, but his most recent outing, which is his most famous, is the Helmer of the recent Blue Beetle movie. Now, not to speak badly of him, Blue Beetle bombed at the box office, and a lot of that has to deal with the fact that no one wanted to see a movie that didn't or doesn't tie into James Gunn's future DC universe. But on the more positive note, I do understand their selection. Blue Beetle was a popcorn munching movie with a little bit of entertaining parts sprinkled with story and drama, which should line up with the overall direction of Just Cause. The producers attached to this project and there are a number, is Kelly McCormick and David Litch, as well as Dimitri M. Johnson, Mike Goldberg, and Timothy Stevenson. Of course, this isn't counting the other producers who will oversee the project through McCormick and Leach's production company, 87 North, or executive producer Dan Jevons. So Universal has all the producers for the project covered, as well as the production company, 87 North, but still no word on who is writing. Now to cover a little bit about the production company 87 North, uh, 87 North was originally conceived as 8711, 27 years ago by two stuntmen and coordinators Chad Stalhelski and David Litch. Little by little, David and Chad worked their way to the director's chair, eventually leading the second unit for a little film called Ninja Assassin. <laughs> And if you do know this film, when was the last time you heard of it or watched it? But from there, the two partners began to work on different movies. Lich would have a string of movies spanning The Mechanic, Conan Barbarian, Hansel and Gretel, Anchorman 2, The Wolverine, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Jurassic World, Captain America Civil War, yada yada yada. But before those last three movies came out, Lich got hitched and found a new production company called 87 North with his wife and partner Kelly McCormick. And their first project was with longtime friend and collaborator Stalhelski. And his project was John Wick. And of quick note, I just wanted to mention that John Wick 1, 2, and 3 and Nobody for 87 North was also written by the same man, Derek Coldston, whose name has circled the Just Cause movie project for some time now. But the massive success of John Wick and the final three second director credits paved the way for Litch to finally sit in the director's chair, and more recently, the producers. He's either directed or produced a number of hit films from Atomic Blonde, his first directorial film, to Bullet Train and The Fall Guy, and all along the way, Kelly McCormick has been his partner in crime. And together, their production company, which was founded just 10 years ago in 2014, has produced 13 action-packed movies, and so far has only suffered one box office mishap, The Fall Guy. So now that we have all of that out of the way, we don't know when Just Cause will come out, because after the failure of Blue Beetle, Soto is in very high demand. He's prepping to film a movie for Amazon's MGM called Wrecking Crew with Jason Momoa and Dave Bautista. One of those names will pop up a little down the line when we're talking about the history of Just Cause. And after that, he's also in talks to write and possibly direct a Transformers spinoff with Marco Ramirez. So he has a very busy schedule, which I suppose goes with Universal's reason for not attaching a writer to this project. Unless this will be Soto's second or third movie writer's credits, depending on Transformers. But that takes care of all today's stuff, now to cover the history. It all began in 2010, just after Just Cause was released, which was a smashing success with critics and fans alike. Adrian Askara 
the man who held the rights to Just Cause, and the more famously as the man who held or still holds the film TV rights for Hitman, which led to the creation of Hitman 2009 and Hitman Agent 47, was looking for a writer for his upcoming Just Cause movie. Askarai and his partner Eric Eisner were looking for a writer who could give them Casino Royale meets Rico Rodriguez and zeroed in on horror film writer Michael Ross. Uh, quick note, this is not the serial killer. Michael Ross' most famous work includes the 2006 Touristas, a movie with a whopping 18% Rotten Tomato score. Askarai, upon hiring this clearly bad writer, who has gone on to write four more movies, each below a five on IMDb, said, quote, We wanted our Casino Royale, if you will, and Michael is the perfect writer to execute that. He starts from reality and grounds the story in a plausible universe. Once you have done that, the audience will believe all the extraordinary things Rico the Scorpion does in the story. Once again, this is a man who has wrote a very bad horror movie. And within one year time, in December of 2011, Ross was let go and replaced by comic book writer Brian Edward Hill. At the time in Hill's career, he had just written a screenplay, which he sold to Universal, and it was never turned into a movie called Gone. And he has just co-wrote a Witchblade series for Top Cow and co-created Images Seven Days from Hell. Hill's adaptation, called Just Cause Scorpion Rising, was never produced, and he left the project sometime around 2013-2014. Hill would go on to work for TV shows Ash vs. Evil Dead, Titans, and work for Marvel and DC on numerous projects including 2018's Batman The Outsiders, Marvel 2019's Killmonger series, and 2024's Ultimate Black Panther. But sometime around 2017, Askarai, after the success of his second Hitman movie, Agent 47, and with hopes of creating a Square Enix universe, where Rico Rodriguez liberates micro-nations, Agent 47 covertly takes out targets, and even Tomb Raider is rummaging around the same world looking for artifacts, Askarai comes as close as he'll ever will be to making a Just Cause film. Askarai and his production company signs a first look deal with a historic or at least a long lasting German film production and distributor company, Constantine Films. Constantine and Askarai agree to produce with Universal distributing their Just Cause film. On this project, they had the likes of Jason Momoa as Rico Rodriguez and Brad Payton set to direct the film. And after the sales, but lower fan reception of Just Cause 4, the drive to make Just Cause the movie was stronger now than ever before. This was on the high of Momoa's career, who had just finished wrapping up his horrible Justice League with Josh Whedon and Frontier series with Brad Payton. But the Momoa craze was growing stronger. Brad Payton at this time also finished up filming his upcoming film Rampage, which would go on to break the video game Movie Curse. But after waiting two years for the project to materialize, Jason Momoa and Brad Payton, who never received scripts, left the project over busy schedules. Momoa would go on to star in movies like Dune, Fast X, Sweet Girl, and The Last Mutant, as well as his reason for leaving the Just Cause project, his TV series C. While Peyton, on the other hand, who only takes on one project at a time, left Just Cause to make Netflix's flop Daybreak and Momoa's film Sweet Girl. If you wish to see his most recent project, it's also on Netflix, and it's Jennifer Lopez's Atlas. Oh, okay then. Wait, how did it know I wanted coffee? I'm sorry, but my pronouns are she and her, not it. But in 2019, though, the train seemed like it was back on the track after it was announced that they had finally found a new writer, Derek Colston something that Momoa and Peyton never had while waiting their two years. And one year later, Constantine and Askarai replaced Peyton with Michael Douse. Now, Douse doesn't really have experience with high action and explosion movies, being more famous for his FUBAR film and TV series, but at that time, he had finished a buddy cop action movie, Stuber. Is this an Uber? <laughs> Get angry! Stop that! Why are you laughing? Oh, this! This is the least! <laughs> it proved that Douse, who was known for his comedic abilities, had what it takes to make a comic action movie, or at least a mid one. And with that, it seemed like there was a change in the air, but not really. For some reason, the film could not get off the ground. Colson had just finished the script by May of 2021 and had believed that acting costs would begin sometime in June of 2021. 
and Dallas believed so too, who seemed very excited about getting ready to film, but nothing came of it. Of course, there is very little online to find out why, so I'm just going to have to assume here. In 2019, a disease was spread from China to the world that halted everyday life, COVID-19. Within the span of the disease outbreak, the world closed itself down for two to three years depending on where you lived. And during that time, numerous TV shows, movies had their projects stalled and even canceled. I believe that during this time, Universal, Constantine, and Askarai allowed the movie rights to revert back to Square Enix, who also at this time now had a new owner, and Embrace, who may have had a hand in ending the Just Cause film attempt in 2022. Then we come to today. Just Cause had officially lapsed out of Askarai's hands, and it's now in the embrace of 87 North and Universal. No more Constantine either. The two production companies will be moving forward with Colts and script, or so it seems, as they haven't released any more information on who the writer is for this project. But that was the simple glossing of the 10-year history and failures of Just Cause. Of course, I don't know the full history of Just Cause and the many failures of Askarai's cinematic hopes, but we can assume that it was Askarai chasing a dream that was too big, who taught many different people into following him, which eventually amounted into nothing. Askarai hasn't came out with a new movie since 2015's Agent 47, but is reportedly working on a Hitman TV series for Hulu, which was written by Colston, and a Kane and Lynch movie, and even a Johnny Quest movie. So far, nothing outside of himself and his production companies are attached. So if I was you, I would hold my breath about Just Cause the movie, because history tells us that it will just end up repeating itself, or at least don't expect the movie until Just Cause 5 is released whenever that will be. But outside of that, you guys have a good one, and leave a like and a comment. Bye.